official launch for the Uganda Medical Expo 2023. We thank you so much. Um, we're officially starting our program. My name is Leila Noor. I am the marketing manager for MedExpo Africa. I will now hand you over to our moderator, Mr. Isaac Rucci. Thank you. Thank you, Laila. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I once again want to amplify um, the gratitude from this house. Thank you for honoring the invitation. Thank you for coming here as we attempt at making history. Um, we want to be able to bring not only the public, the patient, the expatriates together, we want to create a platform where the two different parties can exchange and share information in real time, and this can save a life. Um, so this morning we, uh, we have an opportunity to hear you know, from some expatriates, the brainchild, the owners of the concept and the idea, and uh, maybe just kind of get a roadmap, you know, from here to September 7th and 9th, what's going to be happening and what we should expect. And thereafter, we'll get an opportunity to have a Q&A where, you know, you can ask this uh, table questions and, they'll, you know, hopefully they'll get answered. Um, I'd like this moment, let's just maybe do a quick intro so that you know the people that are sitting in front here. My name is Isaac Rucci. I am one of the directors at Next Media, um, but I'm also a, you know, a practitioner in the entertainment industry. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Daniel Tumwene, and I'm the team lead here at uh, MedExpo Africa events. And I'm, I want to welcome everyone, and I'm thankful uh, that you guys have honored our invitation. Good morning once again. My name is Leila Nur. I am the marketing manager at MedExpo Africa. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation and we hope for the best. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Tim. Um, I guess what we're going to do is we're going to just dive, dive right into the deep end. Um, and I just want you to know that we'll have an opportunity for you to grab sound bites um, at the end. Um, and uh, we'll also get uh, translations to Luganda. No, no Swahili and Karamajong and all the other languages. <laughs> we'll just kind of stick to the two, um, mainly English and and Luganda. Um, so allow me to take this opportunity and invite Dr. Daniel to take us uh, through the intro and the, 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 the presentation. Dr. Daniel. Uh, many of you might be wondering and asking um, why we are here, uh, but we are here to launch a very important initiative uh, first of all, I'm called Daniel Tumwini again. I'm, uh, I am the team lead at uh, MedExpo Africa events, but I'm also a pediatrician. I run the Children's Clinic Nadia, the Children's Clinic Nigeria, and the Children's Clinic uh, Kisasi, and I do a lot of other things as well. Uh, my key thing is really innovating in health and finding gaps and seeing whether we can bring solutions to them. So one of the important things that I've been finding for the last I don't know, 16 years when I've been practicing, is that many Ugandans really lack medical knowledge. Uh, there's a lot of people, health consumers, my father is sick, my mother is sick, my wife has, uh, is pregnant, my child is ill, where do I start? Uh, some people who have the privilege will Google then they'll get all this information and they end up diagnosing themselves as cancer. Some people will go online in other places, others will go to radio, others will go to WhatsApp groups with their friends. But all of us uh, realize that we have gaps in access 
to medical knowledge. And yet, all of us are either consumers or potentially consumers. When my father gets a stroke, who do I talk to? The people who refer us to the people they are referring to, they are doing it either, I, I, I went to this person and uh, my father got well or whatever, okay? I always tell people that why is it that all the doctors give birth in Zambia, but all the non-doctors go to other places? Why? Is there something that doctors know? Please don't quote in Zambia. <laughs> but is there something that doctors know? Okay? We keep talking about um, when, you go to, when your child needs an operation. If you just went to Entebbe there, there is a hospital which gives free treatment for children with surgical conditions for free. But why is it that the masses don't know about it? If, you're if, you're, if you have a neurological issue in the head, in Mbale, there is a world-class hospital uh, which also gives free treatment and people come from other countries to come and access those things. What about us as Ugandans? Okay, here where you are sitting, Children's Clinic Nalia, we give free treatment for Down syndrome patient. Any patient who walks in with Down syndrome, it's our CSR. Our other clinic, autism. But how do we get the masses to actually know that there is good, objective, evidence-based health information? So that big gap causes financial exploitation to the masses. So you go around town, everyone is telling you to do all these tests, everyone is telling you to start again and start again. At the end of the day, you spend so much money. How many times have you heard people say, I wish I had known this earlier. I wouldn't have gone around and wasted all my time. There are people who want to go to India. I don't want to know, but there are, there are some of those things which you go to India for which can be done here. Then there are other people, unscrupulous people, who say you come to India, do bone marrow transplants. Do you know the survivability of a bone marrow transplant? It's less than 5%. So here you are raising all this money, all your hope, and here you are, you go to India. So how do we make sure that we are giving the public the right information? It is evidence-based, it is objective. So one of the things we want to do is do what we call a knowledge a networking event where we invite, we want to invite good caliber healthcare providers. Are they experts in obstetrics? Are they experts in pediatrics? Are they experts in hypertension? Are they experts in cardiology, things of the heart? Are they experts in nutrition? Okay, because there's so much information out there, but at the end of the day, the poor consumer doesn't know what to do. They are confused, okay? So, so one of the things is, can we have a, an event? Um, or at least can we have a fora where we are giving out health information? So, one of the th so we're going to have this fora eventually culminating into a, a medical expo for the public. We call it a medical information expo, really, okay? And this information expo will, will, will happen in the first week of September. And what happens, as we're, trying to, as we're trying to go towards that day, we want to be able to give the public good information. Okay, either we do online, weekly information until it culminates in this expo. So during this expo, as I said, where we want to be able to have um, serious health institutions, respectable, reputable, people we give a sign of approval. We will say, if you came, these are the people we feel are very good and can help you, can help the masses. And when we bring these health experts, we want them to network with the public. We want them to give free information um, that is simplified. We don't want a person with seven PhDs and they're not able to speak the language that the ordinary person understands. So we really want to have a networking, a knowledge and networking events. We want to invite a reputable organization to come and say, you know what? Even if you want a bone marrow, here, we can do here, okay? Even if you wanted this, we can do it here. And we can even do it for free, okay? Why are you wasting a lot of time? Okay, there are also people who don't even want to know about uh, Ugandan doctors and they want to go to India. Why don't you go to Malaysia, which is even 50%? Okay, but what we're trying to say is there's a lot of good information and so for you, 
if we are going to prevent, if we are going to prevent illnesses, if we are going to make you calm and, uh, and uh, present very early to, uh, to cancer. Right now, Ugandans, the average time they present for cancer is stage four, which is the, la which is the worst time to present, where nothing can be done. And yet, I can give you an example, the majority of cancers in children can be cured, especially if you come early. But how do you know that my child has cancer? You'll get to know it at the end. I keep telling my, par my, my patients, and it's so true, 85% of parents don't even know the signs and symptoms of pneumonia, even if I ask the parents here. Yet pneumonia is the largest killer of children around the world. So who is going to give you that information? So we as health experts, we as health people, we said let us be deliberate to bring this health information to the public. So that is why we invited you here. And uh, so this, this, uh, this innovation is run by the Africa Medical Events. Uh, med uh, and so we are hoping that we are able to step into that space where we give good and scientific information so that tomorrow if, for example if you want to come and vaccinate someone tells you let's vaccinate your children you are not fearing because apparently vaccine cause autism at what point do we actually counter those myths those misinformations with good facts without emotion so that's really why we exist to bridge that gap bring the health workers the health institutions to the masses the person in chikubo the person in naria the person in Kololo, every one of those are health consumers. So that's why we wanted to invite you and launch this initiative. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Daniel. So your question is in three part. Is this the first of its kind? Are we taking it to the grassroots? Expound more on the dangers of Self-medication. Thank you very much. Those are three in one. Uh, okay, when is the expo? Yes, please. Good morning. My name is Flavia Nasaka. I work with Uganda Radio Network. My question is around, you, you talked about the low awareness as the reason as to why this initiative is coming up. And I thought about how medicine is that you're not allowed to advertise and all that. With the rise in misinformation, do you think there should be a policy change to allow medical facilities to also advertise? Okay, that's a very good one. Yes, please. And we'll take that as the last one and then we'll answer and then come back for more questions. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Agnes Chotale Ngedide. I work with Vision Group, New Vision Flagship. Yes, my question is about the Expo. Um, how long is it going to be? For how many days? For how many hours? Then, after the Expo, what next? You see, there is a lot of misinformation. There is lack of awareness. So, is the, if it's a one-off, is it going to be sufficient to give people enough knowledge about medicine and medical issues? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I think we're going to give doctor an opportunity to answer. Let me just add to what she's saying. It is very true. There's a lot of misinformation. And unfortunately, this has also come with the development of information flow, the internet. You find that every now, every Tom, Dick, and Harry has become a doctor or a consultant. So those challenges are prevalent. And, and I hope our doctor will be able to tackle some of those things. Dr. Daniel. Okay, thank you very much for those questions. Those are very important questions. Um, it is going to be the first of its kind at this scale. Usually what happens is, we, uh, many times when doctors and the public interact, they tend to interact either A, at a health facility, B, at a health camp. So this is not a health camp. Health camp usually is when people, we ask doctors, we come, we invite people, and we try and treat them. And the flow of information is not really that good, where the core thing is to treat. 
this is not a health camp. Yes, they will, those things will be there. Uh, we will even have training sessions. Certain organizations have said, we know what, we want to partner with you and say, for example, train the public either about the importance of giving blood. You know, there's a lot of partners who want to come on board and so one of the reasons we want to, to inform you is also to, to look for even more partners. So they will be training, but that's the secondary goal. The real key goal is healthcare, uh, passing healthcare from the, from, the, from the health workers, the health experts, the health institutions to the, to the public. So something like this has ever happened, I think, two, one or two years ago, but specifically the surgeons. I think they did something very small. The public wasn't well informed, okay? But we want to have, to even invite the surgeons this time and make it a very, very big and wide activity. So the surgeons will be there, the, the physicians will be there, and, the, and all these medical groups, the Association of Pediatricians, the Association of Obstetricians and Gynecologists will all be here. So the idea is to have a sector-wide. All doctors are coming together, all health workers are coming together, all nutritionists are coming together and say, you know what, let us be able to give information to the public, what, who, whatever public you are, okay? The masses, and those are the, really the people that we are targeting. And that goes into the, your second question, the grassroots. Um, we want to carry out this in, here in Kampala. Um, we also want to be able eventually to be able to go to the west, to go to, you know, to West Nile, to go to the east, okay? But also, not only that, we want to utilize platforms. So in, in, this, in this meeting right now, we have influencers in TikTok, influencers on Twitter, influencers on Facebook, influencers on LinkedIn. How do we harness uh, social media? Okay, so we have also a program where we are able, where we, a, we go to the traditional media, uh, either on television, on radio, print media, where we want to write articles which really inform the masses, but also social media as well. So it's going to be a 360 uh, kind of um, initiative where the key thing is are we, are we presenting good information to the public? Um, which then goes to the expo itself. The expo is going to be held at uh, Lugogo uh, Uma Hall and uh, it will be from September 7th to September 9th uh, daily. So we would invite the public the same way they come and uh, do other expos. This one is really geared for the health consumer. Um, and, and, and that's really the days we're going to be having. Um, then I think they asked the question of dangers of self-medication. Can I answer that last? Because then I can continue with the theme of the expo. Then I'll, I'll, I promise I'll answer it. Then after the expo, there are partners who, or there are people who have wanted to partner with us so that we can continue um, this initiative well beyond the expo, make it a six-month campaign, make it a one-year campaign, and we are still also looking for partners, other partners as well. So we don't want it to be just a one or two institution activity, but we want it to be um, almost like a grassroots activity that is led to actually uh, close that gap. Because honestly, here, you know, the Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge, and this is so true, okay? Many people perish for lack of knowledge. And so it cannot be a Daniel, it cannot be a Medex Expo event alone, so it's important that we bring very many partners on board. Already there are some partners who want this thing to, to continue, uh, this campaign to continue well beyond September. And of course, we also invite people to come and do the same thing as well. Um, somebody mentioned about advertising policy change, yes. And this is one of the things, this is one of the reasons why we said it is important that we start this initiative. Everybody knows that health workers are not allowed to advertise. So I am here, I have imported a state of the art whatever, and I'm seated, and someone drives past me and goes to another place where they say go to India. Even though we're not allowed to advertise, we are allowed to inform. Now, what advertisement and information is, is very, is, 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 can also be a gray line, 
okay? We are allowed to inform the public, but we are not allowed to advertise. So one of the reasons we said, okay, can we bring these institutions to come and inform the public? What are the things they have? Okay, what are the issues? We are not allowed to say we are the best, because that's advertising. We are allowed to say, here we do bone marrow, we can subsidize it for you because we are working with so and so and so and so, the, our partners are able to manage. That's information. So we are allowed to give information, but we're not allowed to advertise. Um, and this really is, 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 a, is a law to avoid scrupulous people coming up and saying, you know what, take my thing and you'll be fine. Take my thing and you'll be cured of 17 different diseases. Okay? You are allowed to inform, and that information must be evidence-based, it must be truthful, it must be objective. So that's really one of the things that we wanted to, to, to discuss uh, in, this, in this whatever. Um, so the thing about uh, dangers of self-medication, what people don't know is that every drug is a poison. Every drug is a poison. The safest drug in the world is, para, is Panadol. Even it is a poison. And uh, you know, <laughs> fear a person who doesn't fear drugs. A good doctor, a good health worker fears drugs. Okay? Because every drug has a side effect. You take too much paracetamol, it's going to mess up with your liver. Seriously. Okay, but everybody, check, ah, headache, paracetamol, or fever, paracetamol. So self-medication is, is, is something we don't tend to, in, to encourage. Okay, we don't tend to encourage it. Um, we want to say that if, if you have symptoms, please visit somebody who has the information. So we, we really want to discuss. The dangers are you're going to get a wrong dose, First of all, you're treating the, might even be treating the wrong thing because your, your person on your people on WhatsApp said, oh, even me, when I had a, a, an earache, I took this. Oh, when I went to the doctor for my child, they gave him this. So also you give, that is wrong. Even me, when I have twins in front of me as a doctor, you treat those twins completely different. Because all those, because children, Adults react differently to different drugs. They could have the same condition, two twins. This one doesn't respond, this one responds. This one reacts, this one doesn't react. Okay? So, self-medication is dangerous because you can have, you can misdiagnose, and, and the more you misdiagnose, the later you present to an, to an expert, and the later you present to an expert, the, the, the less things he's able to do for you. You have a lump in your breast, you self-medicate because it's painful. So you don't go and what and be checked. And by the time you come, it is a cancer and it has spread. Yet had you gone initially, what would have happened? They would have managed it. So self-medication, self-treatment is extremely dangerous, especially in this era of internet. In fact, we also want, like discouraging internet doctors you need to be examined. You need someone to be in front of you who understands your condition, listens to that chest, touches that abdomen, looks through your ears, okay? Not, doctor, even me, many patients come to me and say, doctor, my child has this, what should I take? And I tell them, please come and visit her, what? A health worker, because even I can't tell what your child has over the phone. So, we need to discourage um, self-medication, self-treatment, okay? Doctor, before you switch to another question, are we witnessing any rising cases of the resistance to drugs because of this? <laughs> Not only that, actually, and this is the bad thing. Um, you know, when I just, when I just graduated, 50, almost 15 years ago, there are some drugs you could give a patient. Now, th those drugs cannot even be given because everyone goes to the pharmacy, they take all these drugs, and before we know it, those drugs can't work. And this was particularly bad during COVID. 
Everyone went and bought themselves all these drugs. So now we are finding that when many of these children are coming, the only medication they are responding to is a drug which a vial costs 200,000. Yet previously, there are drugs which cost 1,000 and your child could respond to them. You do blood cultures, resistant, 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 resistant. And the bad thing is, because these developed countries no longer experience some of these infections, for them they are fighting with stroke, diabetes, lifestyle disease. They don't get these infections. We get a lot of these infections because we're in the tropics. Okay, there's a lot of, there's a lot of infections around us. Okay, so these people are not developing new drugs. The last antibiotic to be developed seriously was in the 1990s. Okay, in the 60s, 70s, they used to churn out antibiotics. Some of the antibiotics we're using were developed in the 60s. Now, to get a new drug to be developed, so we are now going through the last of the drugs. So <laughs> one day, a day will come because of resistance where actually we can't even give you what? Medication. Because almost all those medications are resistant. So we're going through a lot of drugs where when I graduated, a drug for your child, 1K. IV ceftriaxone if your child was sensitive to it. Now even the type of ceftriaxone we use, I think is 60K. Okay? The other one cannot, cannot work. Now the next, if that one doesn't work, the next one is 200K. So it's very dangerous. It is very dangerous. It's the, it's the latest epidemic we are fighting against. So some of this is the information we can be giving. Okay? I used to be the vice president in my previous life of the Antibi Uganda Antibiotic Society. And it was a very, very difficult thing to encourage parents, don't give antibiotics. Not every fever must be treated with an antibiotic. Okay? 80% of fevers in children are viral. Why are you, giving, why are you home giving an antibiotic? Coughs don't, don't need amoxil. That's, that's the thing in the public. Oh, he has a cough. Get amoxil. No. Most of those coughs don't need treatment. Okay? So how do we tell that to the public? Oh, and by the way, a sign of pneumonia is not cough. It is fast breathing. So please, I know you also have kids. When your child is breathing fast, your child needs oxygen. They don't need an antibiotic. So I hope I've answered that uh, question. I, I just wanted to supplement on, sorry, I'll introduce myself once again. My name is Leila Noor and I'm the marketing manager. I just wanted to supplement on our vision in terms of sustainability. Like uh, Dr. Daniel Tumwine has mentioned that um, basically we have a plan to educate and continue giving the public knowledge. We have a sustainability plan that will be shared as well during the expo and also on all our, our, our traditional media and social media. Thank you. Um, thank you, guys. I think we're going to pick up again, and we'll do like we did before. We'll take four questions, and he takes note, and then he answers them. Please. Thank you, Dr. Daniel and uh, colleagues. My name is Winfred Akello from Malikad. Um, I just wanted to ask to know, is it going to be for free, free entry for everyone. Thank you, Winfred. We'll take another one, take four of them, and then please go ahead in the back. Uh, good morning, my name is Linda from Next Media. My question is, do you modern practitioners of medicine acknowledge that um, traditional medicines have also played a key role in uh, people in the country right now, would you, if you're holding the expo, also allow for traditional medicines or natural or organic medicines to also be displayed at the expo? Because we had instances where, um, like COVID, many people turned to traditional or plant-based medicines for treatment, and we cannot run away from the fact that many people are turning to these for diseases like diabetes, for diseases like hypertension, for you know even pneumonia. So do you acknowledge that these are also effective and would you allow for them to be um, displayed at the expo with the modern or science medicines? Thank you, uh, we'll take two more. Thank you so much, once again I'm Agnes. 
Yes, my question goes to Dr. Daniel. You've expounded a lot on um, self-medication and its dangers. But you, I'm glad you're passing this information to us. Of course, we shall pass it over. But are you, are you tackling some of the people who are involved in um, dispensing? Because what are you doing uh, with the sources where people get this medicine from? The drug shops, the pharmacies. So what are you telling them? In the, if, in, the, in the effort to fight self-medication. Thank you. Okay, we'll get one more, and Dr. Daniel will tackle. Do we have one more? Okay. 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 She's adding to what she asked. Do we need regulations in, in terms of those who are dispensing these medicines? Okay. Um, there, is, there seems, before he goes into it, again touching on what you were talking about, there seems to be a double standard. Uh, this is my observation that somehow there is a restriction or an embargo on doctors to not advertise but when it comes to the other people you're talking about theirs is free reign i mean when you look at the the sanyukas of this world yeah, okay maybe book a day you see a lot of those traditional doctors advertising and and really going full on um and i don't know maybe what works for the doctors doesn't work for them just thought i'd throw that out there on top of what you're putting to uh, Dr. Daniel, floor is yours, doctor. I think I'll, I'll take on the question of the, um, is it f how, what is the, the entrance for the public? We have tried to make it as easy and accessible to every Ugandan. We're only charging a fee of 5,000 shillings for entrance. Of course, we will have exhibitors. Those have a different arrangement and they are welcome to come and partner with us on this initiative, but for the public, it's as low as 5,000 shillings. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot uh, for those questions as well. Um, traditional medicines, do they play a key role? They actually do. You know, when you have, when your child gets malaria, they are either treated, they're treated by two or three different uh, medicines. All those are traditional medications. Some of them were got from China. Some, they are tree bugs. Okay, that's, that's herbs. Okay, when you're giving your child quinine, when you're giving your child whatever, whatever medication, most medications start as herbs. And that is how people actually come to know that, oh, this thing actually works. So, I don't, see, I don't know if there's a doctor who doesn't appreciate the role of traditional medicine in medicine, in Western medicine. Let me put it that way. The issue has always been one. Remember what I said? All medicines are poisons. Okay? When you, if you took that back that eventually makes quinine and you just give it to your child... You don't know how it's going to react. You don't know the dose that is, that is perfect for it to work with minimal side effects or with zero side effects. So what you're doing is you're gambling. The medicine works, but if 50 people took it, 40 will, go, will get sick, sorry, will get cured, 10 will get sick or die. Now. I don't really like this division of Western medicine and traditional medicine. If, and this is why there's an existence of, uh, I think there's an association of herbalists, it's called Theta. And they're trying to do one thing. They're trying to say, do we have herbs as Ugandans? Yes. Can we make sure that we do studies on them so that these herbs are safe? Okay? Safe. You might say they are effective, but are they safe? Because the first thing when you have a drug, 
what's its safety profile? Then number two, a very far two, what is its effectiveness? Is it safe? That is why organizations like the National Drug Authority exist. You cannot claim that this drug works without having taken it through tests to know that it is safe on the public. Otherwise, we are no good. Otherwise, there, you know, anyone can just come and say, take this, because my grandmother took it, and you start convulsing. Okay? Medicine is a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous thing. And I think people don't appreciate that enough. Okay? More drugs cause harm than more drugs cause good. So, if someone has a herb, the same way the Chinese did, and they said, this one cures malaria. Okay? Lumafantrin. That's a Chinese herb. It's a proper Chinese herb. So, we are not against those. So, the people we want to come and work with us are people whose herbs, and they are there. Now, you can go to the National Drug Authority, whose herbs have been approved and have been found to be scientifically uh, scientifically accepted by the National Drug Authority, which is the regulatory authority as a hub that actually this works as a hub. They are most, they are mostly complementary. So that's the key. It is not, uh, for me, my hub cures 17 cancers. We shall not allow you to be, because we want, as I said, we want credible even if it proves 17 cancers, please get it scientifically tested. When, 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 the, when the data comes out, no problem. No problem. Okay? So that's why we, we want it to be. Uh, whatever we are giving must have scientific basis, whether it is a hub or whether it is medical, medi med Western medicine. The key thing here is, is their scientific evidence-based information we are giving. So that's really to, I'm hoping that's um, what's going on. Um, the thing with um, tackling people involved with dispensing, we are doctors. Our regulatory bodies regulate doctors. They don't regulate dispensers. Okay? The people who regulate dispensers are the National Drug Authority. And, they, and we've invited them to come uh, during that day want them to talk about exactly what the lady has been saying. We want them to talk about self-medication. We want them to talk about, um, um, you know, the, the, the side effects of drugs. And when you have a side effects of drugs, you are duty bound to report it to the National Drug Authority. Then they go back to the manufacturers of that drug and say, your drug is killing Ugandans. So there's a lot that the National Drug Authority can do. So for them, they regulate drugs. For us, we re for us, the people who regulate us, regulate our practice to make sure we're not telling you fake things. Okay, that is why even if I see somebody on the street talking about this and this and this, I have no powers to make him stop. However, I have influence on the clients. Okay, the clients can listen to this person, the client can listen to me, and they make what we call an informed choice. And the best type of patient is a patient with informed choice. They are not, called, they are not going to the health worker and the health worker is God and saying, do this. No, they'll say, you know what? There are three options. Option A, option B, option C. I think I want option B because it's the job of the health worker to inform. The advantages, the disadvantages. The so the best, the best patient is an informed patient. In medicine, we say 50% of managing asthma is parent education. The moment the parent understands the symptoms of a child with asthma, 50% of the time, they're able to hold it in its tracks. So for us, what we're trying to do is empowering the, co the healthcare consumer. These are the choices you have. Yes, there are choices outside there, but these are the choices you have, and we can vouch that they have the scientific evidence backing it. That's the key. Before we wrap this up, yes, Nyawa. There's a question that Agnes here asked on the aftermath of the, of the expo. How are you going to handle? Sometimes when, when 
you said this is not a medical camp, but usually after events like this, we see people trying to seek services. What's the plan? Are you going to refer some of these people to places? What's the after plan? That's a question of continuity. Dr. Daniel, any other questions? Yes, sir. Back there. Morning, everyone. Mine, just a question to regarding the expo. There are these conditions where I don't need medicine by term of management. Look at conditions like autism, cerebral palsy, something like that. It's one of the things we stress most of the parents. Is there a provision for such service providers that I can come and it's like I can seek assistance or guidance regarding such conditions or you are just going to look at medical interventions and surgical interventions? Kindly, that's my inquiries. Okay, thank you. Let me start with the last one. Um, we are not planning. The key thing is not planning to treat. Yes, if you want, you can bring your patient. But remember, the key thing is knowledge, networking. Okay? A, my child is not talking. My child is behaving differently. There will be a session on development, child development conditions. Okay? Are you sure we're dealing with autism? Are you sure we're, de we're not dealing with Asperger's syndrome? Are you sure we're not dealing with a normal child who has just delayed? of which 95% of children fall into, okay? So there will be experts talking about that. On the other hand, you have, say, organizations or even associations that handle autism of whom we have invited, okay? Or cerebral palsy of whom we have invited. So the, either they'll have an exhibition thing and say, you know what, if your child has autism, us as an association, because huh? there are different, it's a spectrum, autism is a spectrum. If your child's key thing is this, we recommend this. Can you, can you go to these guys? If, you, if it is this, we recommend these guys. Can you go to these guys? Even, even parents with associations are, are welcome, because remember, our key thing is we are networking. You, you, have your net, you have your autistic child and you're suffering alone. How do, how do you bring in other parents to come and say, you know what, we have an association to support you. When our child had this, this is what we did and they got better. So we have invited associations. Because remember, we want to encourage and empower this health consumer. So yes, our key, key thing is knowledge, network. I want the person, our, our, my success on that day is a person walks in, they interact with all, all what we have to provide, and when they leave, they now know where to take their mother, they know where to take their pregnant sister, and they know where to take their child. That's my success. And they understand the conditions they want to understand. And they are able to then multiply. The masses are then able to multiply. No, 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 I heard about this from the expo. Go to these people. That, to me, is what I want. The, the effect, then, is multiplied. And uh, that's, that then speaks to the, sec to the other question, which is, are we referring people to hospitals or whatever? But the hospitals are already there. Okay? Many medical camps, what they do is they bring the people, then they say, now you go, no, here, here. But, I, then I, but then again, I said, treatment is, is secondary. The key thing is knowledge network. Yes, we will have people from other health facilities treating, screening. We want to bring audiometry, proper screening, not these things of hypertension and you take your weight. No, we want, we want to bring people to actually look into people's eyes. Okay, we want to bring people to look at, uh, you know, there's the long-term indicators of diabetes, three months, not, not these blood sugars, which, is, which, only talk, which only tells your blood sugar at that time. Proper screening. Okay, and then because the, then you'll have so many options from where to go. Okay, so that's the that's the difference. Because our issue is not a medical camp. Our issue is we are giving you knowledge. If you have diabetes, we feel there is a diabetes treatment group, which is a research thing that one gives people in this research free treatment. There is also an association of diabetes people living with diabetes. There's an association of parents and children also with diabetes. But then there is also 
endocrinologists whose core, core thing is diabetes. Can we introduce them to you? So all those people, we hope to invite them and bring them to the masses. So that's, because for example, diabetes is a very expensive disease to treat. Insulin itself costs a lot of money. And there are so few people interested in supporting uh, people who have diabetes. So all those are going to be there. We've invited them and we want them to be part of that uh, group that actually uh, comes and interacts with the masses. Ah, Muruganda, it's singular Dalokuru Kurunako or Expo. It's singular Dalokur to Chijakubaku Janjaba. Ovaku Janjabiwa. Chijakubaku Mania. Nti wemba ni nene nduwa dewe eti ndaga wa. Chichikende da kusingira dalobu kuru. Expo chegezako o kuteleza. O kusembeza o kumanya kuno elia abantu. O mutu no sobolo o kumanya. Nti no guvoro wade. Ngo ine nduwa dea sukari. Baji janja babatia baji janja vila wa. Um, wajja kubera yo. Abajja o kubanga bali mu position ye janja ba. Baja kubanga bakula nezi test, no scanning. Na inga siche chijo kubanga chichisinzo obu kuru. Echisingide dalo obu kuru, echitugata, echitutuala wali uh, wamu fena. Kwe kusobala okumanya. Okufuna information yeyo. Joba deto ina. No, no lema kwe kubamu chifuba chitisha na gami yon tumuntu. Wagena niye kubamu chifuba na ganti senga na manya. Eno opportunity jetulina. Expo jetulete de. Okuleta haba sawo ba expertise na fe ba consumer fe abakoze sa edagale byo fe abalina omulwadde awaka nga mulwadde wa pressure abalina omwana omulwadde nga gubadoloza ina kisenyi ge cha mukwatira mu chaga na nengo omwana alwadde pneumonia ne olo kubantu obadde tomanyi tomanyi symptoms za pneumonia zitambula zitia expo egenda tu omukisogo ogwo kumanya nga ticho nacho chikulu nyo Kwela nebo gena noja, nebo labo msao, Dr. Daniel wacho ogedeko. Nchizibu nyo mutu muku bile simu na mganti. Omwana wange, alipulida ali, ali, alina chino na chino muweda galachi. Ye ngo msao, buwabata nalaba mwana, kutestinga mwana. Techiba chitufu ye kukua buweda gala ya dama nyinyo. He's an expert. So information, ne knowledge vikulu nyo, elanga bie visingi dedalo, bie vitu tuwala wali ku expo. Omuntu wa buli jo okusobola okumanya tugamenga gwo ino mulwadde ino mu ino mu fena abali wano nebo bagwe mu nyine to ina ndwadde yo nagwe to ina sukali to ina pressure nayo izo kubo ina omuntu gwo manya amulina nengo ba mu yisa bubi so echi chija kuba chikulu nyo ko lorunako fe okusobola okufuna information um ebuzo bya fe babi weddeyo Chila bika biwe deo. Tugena funa opportunity. Muso bolo kujane muengeji. Nga tuja kutani kana abolo zungu. Na abolo ganda. Abagalo funa bu sound bites. From doctor. If we can manage it. Uh, nga tatuko zinze. Nga traffic kanji. Um, that should be the next session. And thereafter. We want to invite each and every one of us. To ina oka break. We'll have some. Uh, we'll break some bread. Some tea bites. And you're welcome to come and join us. Nenga kati. Nenga kati.